How many people are okay with this so far? Do you see what we've done with these properties? We've actually broken up a pretty intense polynomial into limits of constants and limits of just x terms. Have you seen that? What's interesting is I want you to think about this. Can you do this for any polynomial? You can always separate by addition subtraction, right? You separate term by term then. Can you always take out exponents? Yes, yes you can. Can you always separate multiplication? Absolutely. So you could do this with any polynomial. You follow me on that one? Well now check it out. Since we've broken up into such simple components, you can now use those two basics, there's only two basics, use those two basics to actually evaluate this limit. Can you tell me what's the <laughs> limit of x as x approaches 2? It was one of those basics that I gave you. I drew the, the pictures of them. It said the limit of x as x approaches a was a. It said the limit of c, no matter what, was c. You with me on that? So the limit of a constant is the constant. So the limit of x is a, whatever it's approaching. So you all tell me now, what's the limit of x as x approaches 2? It's just 2. Yeah, 2. And then I can cube it. <coughs> Minus. Oh, how about this one? What's the limit of 2? Doesn't even matter what I'm approaching. Well, what's the limit of 2 as I'm approaching 2? The limit of a constant is the constant. So what's the limit of 2? Two? Two. It's 2. It never changes. 2 times. Uh, how about this one? What's the limit of x as x approaches 2? Two? 2. It is 2. Plus, what's the limit of 7? No matter what you're approaching, what's the limit of 7? You with me on the 7? It's a constant, yeah? So this is, we had that, those two basics. The limit of a constant is simply the constant itself. It's a horizontal line. The limit's always going to be the same. It's just 7. Can you add that together? How much is it? Eight minus four plus seven looks like eleven to me. Did you get eleven as well? That means we've just calculated our very first limit without doing tables and without looking at graphs. We're able to do this. Now, can I can I ask you to do one thing for me, please? Just check this out. Can you go ahead and just in your head or off to the side, take this number two, plug it in there, and tell me what you get. Can you do that for me? What's f of two? Wait, say that again? 11. Did you all get 11 when you plugged in 2? Wait, that's weird. Is that a coincidence? No. No, it's not a coincidence because here's what we can do. Oh, not 2. Sorry. 11. It says, well, if you can separate a polynomial into its terms and then its, its individual components raised to powers <coughs> and multiples like that, essentially all you're doing is plugging in that number for those spots, for your spots of x, right, for your variables of x. Basically, you can do that here. So here's what I'm going to say. You already determined, I already asked you this, whether this would work for every polynomial. You said that it would it or wouldn't it? Can you do this with every polynomial? Polynomial of things that looks like that. Can you do it for stuff like that? Absolutely. You can always separate them. Take powers outside. Break it up into a constant times a variable. That means that to find the limit is an important thing. To find the limit of any polynomial, all you have to do is evaluate that function at the point A, whatever that is. <coughs> this is going to work for every polynomial. So this idea works for every polynomial. Is point A always given? Oh yeah, yeah. And so it's never, it won't be, it'll always be a given in the, for initially? Yes, this number is always given to you. Has to be given. Works for any polynomial. In, in plain, uh, it, well, in ma mathematics, I'll say it in plain English in, in just a bit. Here's basically, basically what all this stuff says. It says that the limit as x approaches a of some polynomial. Do you understand the notation? The limit of a, a, a polynomial, that's a polynomial, as x approaches some number is equal to <coughs> p of a. What's p of a say? That's exactly right. It says evaluate the function at that point. Basically, here's what it says in English. 
to find the limit of a polynomial, just plug in the number. That's what it says. Can y'all do that? Oh yeah, that's great. It says to evaluate the limit of a polynomial, plug in the value. To find the limit of a polynomial, just plug in the value. which is A in our case. You want to see a few more? Yes, please. Yeah. Hopefully you're not like, nah, done. Forget all the hard stuff. Just leave it like this. You want the hard stuff, don't you? <laughs> yes. Not really. But yes. <laughs> Limit of x to the fifth minus 3x plus 4 all to the third power as x approaches 2. That's what we're asking here for. Now, the question is, could you, could you, if, if they wanted you to, could you go through this whole process and do the same thing? Yeah, yeah absolutely. You could pull out that, that 3, that power 3. You see it? You could separate all the terms. You could separate out that power 5. You separate the 3 and the x, plug in those numbers in those two spots, and it would be essentially just evaluation of that. So, how can we figure out this limit? Just plug that number. Why don't you do that on your own? Plug that number in there. Substitute that in there. Because we know that the limit is going to equal whatever this function is with evaluated at the point A equals 2. Twenty-seven thousand. 27, how many people got twenty-seven thousand? Twenty. Is it twenty-seven thousand? Mm -hmm. yeah. I hope so. Well, not everyone raised your hand. Are you guys okay on how we got those numbers? I need to know. If you're not, then I can re-explain it. But imagine not sure if you're okay on how we got those numbers, the twenty-seven thousand. Yes. So, do you see that what we're what we're actually doing is saying, okay, I know this limit is the same thing as evaluation when I plug in the number two. And then cube it. 32, 3. Yeah, I know I have too many twos. 32 minus 6, it's like 26, plus 4, that's 30. Take 30 <laughs> to the third power, and you get 27,000. You follow me on that one? Yes, okay. And that's exactly what that means. Hey, you just evaluated your first limit. Don't you feel proud? <coughs> no? Oh, well, you're gonna. You're gonna. You get a plaque. Sure. <laughs> Eat a bunch of candy, you get lots of plaque. <laughs> get it? Get it? That's a joke. Plaque versus plaque. Oh, it's so. Whatever. <laughs> I know. By the way, not all of our limits go to 2. I'm just using 2, so you know. What about that? Now, is that a polynomial? Yeah. The answer is no. No, that's a rational. That's a rational function. Is it a polynomial? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. But could you still do the same basic thing? And the answer is yeah, you can because of I think it's rule number four or your property number four, uh, three or four, one of those things, which says that you can actually separate your division, can't you? Provided that your denominator is not what. Will that make the denominator zero? <laughs> Will this point make that zero? Then you're fine. Then you're fine. You can do that. So because we can do this whole step, this is the limit as x approaches 2 of 4x squared plus 1 over limit as x approaches 2 of x minus 3. Well, now look at it. Is that a polynomial? 
Yes, is that a polynomial? Yeah, they're both polynomials. These, that's a polynomial and that's a polynomial. So this says you can evaluate that by plugging in 2, and you can evaluate that by plugging in 2. The only thing you got to check for is that the denominator is not 0, which we already know, right? It can't be 0 on the denominator. That would be a problem. So do you need to show me this step? No, no. Just plug in the number. If it works, then you're okay. If you have 0 on the denominator, then you're not okay. Okay? <laughs> do you get the idea, though? Do you see that we can separate division? Provided that this number does not evaluate that polynomial, make it zero, then that's fine. So we're going to separate that. We don't have to actually show this part. It's just I'm showing you once that it is true because now it makes it a polynomial. It makes it a polynomial. And we know from here, hey, you can evaluate a limit of a polynomial by just substituting them in that number. So therefore, we can do it here. Uh, have you substituted that in yet? So it's going to be 4 times 2 squared plus 1 over 2 minus 3. 17 over negative 17? Mm -hmm. Notice how here I have to write the limit, here I have to write the limit, here I have to write the limit. As soon as you evaluate, you don't write the limit anymore. Do you guys see the difference there? So yes, you must write the limit until you actually evaluate it. Once you do that, you're done. No more <coughs> limits. You just have those numbers, but you have to write it up until that point. Question? Um, say that x was approaching 3, would you still be able to... You so glad you it. asked that question. <clears throat> Can I answer that in like 30 seconds? Okay. Okay, cool. I love those. Uh, don't you love it like when you're thinking about something and you're going to make your next point because you're a teacher, you know, that's kind of cool that you want to do. And then someone goes, hey, what about this? You're like, ah, oh, that's my next point. Don't you love that? That doesn't happen to you. It happens to me all the time, which I love that. Uh, actually, it's going to be a minute and 45 seconds. All right. Do you have the time on that sheet of paper? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not OCD. <laughs> How about that one? Is that a polynomial? Please shake your head no. No, polynomials look like this. That's it. That's polynomials. No roots, no denominators. That's polynomials. So where this is definitely not a polynomial, but I want you to see what you can do. Do you see that you could pull the cube root out of it? Once you did that, you could separate by division like we did in this problem. So essentially, anything will work provided you plug the number in and you don't have any domain issues. So basically, if you plug this in and it doesn't make that zero, you're fine. It doesn't make, well actually that's a cube root, it doesn't even matter. Uh, cube roots you can plug in any number, it's fine. So provided that doesn't, that's not zero. If you plug in one, does this denominator go to zero? No. Then you're fine. Why don't you go ahead and plug in one and see what we have. Notice I have my limit here. We could do all this work, right? We could separate the cube root. We could do that. We could show that. We could separate my limits by division and show that as well. But you just need to know that we can plug in a number into a rational or any type of uh, problem that we have. Uh, provided that we don't have that denominator of zero and don't run any, into any domain issues. So if we plug in that value of one, we get the... Do we still have the cube root? Yeah. Don't forget about the cube root. <coughs> How much does that give you? Well, if you're going to say it, say it. How much does it give you? Cube root of six. Cube root of six. Cube root of six. 